Hey y'all, welcome to sixth grade, chapter seven, lesson eight. We're gonna go ahead and get started, but before we do, I just wanna explain something to you guys really fast. So a number by itself is one term. A number with a letter is another term, okay? Any letter, doesn't matter what that letter or number is, it could be a hundred X, doesn't matter, okay? That's one term. If it was a hundred X squared, that's a different term. You cannot add the two of those together or subtract the two of those together, okay? Same thing if it's a different X on it, okay? Squared and cubed, you cannot combine those two when you're adding and subtracting, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and get started, okay? So I, you'll notice that I went through and I just used just a, a light marker. You can use a highlighter, colored pencil, whatever you need. And I just highlighted my like terms. This one has an X and this one has an X. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so y'all can see a little bit better. Okay, so 5X and 2X, you just add those together for 7X. We still are adding the other seven there. So 7X plus seven, that's it, okay? Don't need to do any more, okay? So now we have 16 plus 13p and 9p are both like terms because they both have a p, okay? So now we just need to do 13 minus nine is four and keep the p, okay? Not so bad, okay? We're gonna start down here. Now this is where that y and y squared come in, okay? They're not the same, okay? So you can combine the y's and you can combine any, any y squared, but you cannot combine a y squared and a y. Okay, not with adding and subtracting. Okay, so we only have one of these, which means it's going to stay the same. Okay. Okay, we have 13y minus 8y. Well, 13, we're, we're adding because the bigger number is positive. So positive 13, negative 8, minus 8. Okay, so we're, the bigger number here is positive. So we're adding, okay, 13 minus 8 is 5. Y, done. I cannot combine them anymore. I know that's a Y and that's a Y, but that's actually a Y squared. Very different, guys. Okay. All right. So now, before I could go through and highlight them, I need to go ahead and use the distributive property so that I know what my terms actually are. So I'm going to do that in just a regular pencil so that then I can go and I can highlight my like terms. Okay. So. This is where we take on the letter or um, exponent, okay? So five times two H, you can multiply those. So that's gonna be 10 H plus, there's a plus sign in the middle there, and five times three is 15. Then we're gonna add on that three H that did not disappear, okay? So now I have an H and an H, and then I have a 15, okay? So because it doesn't matter when we're adding which one comes first, I'm gonna go ahead and put my 15, and then 10H plus 3H is 13H, done, okay? Really not so bad, guys. I want you guys to do number six. I'm gonna go ahead down to number seven and show you guys a little bit of how to do this, okay? We're going to use the distributive property. So we're going to take whatever number is outside of the parentheses and we're going to multiply it onto the number that's inside the parentheses. Okay. And we're going to keep the sign. It looks like all of these are in the middle there. Okay. So I'm going to put that in the middle of every single one of these because they're all addition. Okay. I'm only going to do seven through nine with you. You guys can do the other ones. Maybe we'll see. Okay. Maybe not. Okay. So. 2 times 9 is 18, and 2 times 5 is 10, and I'm going to keep the K. All right? All right, so now 5 times 3 is 15, and I'm keeping the M, and then 5 times 2 is 10. I'm done. Okay? 6 times G is 6G, and 6 times H is 6H. Remember, when there is not a number in front of a letter, 
it means that there's one of them, okay? We don't say, can I have one apple? We say, can I have an apple, right? Okay, so that's just apple, okay? Okay, so now this one, it wants us to pull out a number that can be used on both of those, okay? So let me give you an example, okay? Four goes into 4D and it goes into eight. So I'm gonna pull that four out and I'm going to put it onto D plus two. Now let me show you why, okay? Because four times D is 4D and four times two is eight and I have the addition sign in the middle, okay? So we're pulling out a number that goes into both of those, into both of the numbers, okay? And then we're going to go from there, okay? So 21 and 35, the only number I can think of that goes into both of them is gonna be seven. So I'm gonna pull seven out. I know that seven times three is 21, and I need 21 P, so I need to put a P there, okay? Now, seven times five is 35, and I need to keep that Q there done. Okay, so now if I were to multiply that out, I would have 7 times 3 is 21, add the P. 7 times 5 is 35, add the Q. Okay. All right, guys, this one, we're going to pull out 9. So 9 on 2, 9 times 2 is 18, and I'm keeping the X. And 9 times 1 is 9, so I'm just going to do Y. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do number 13. You guys do number six and you're going to do number 14 on the front side. Okay. So the expression 15N plus 12N plus 100 represents the total cost in dollars for skis, boots, and lessons for N skiers. So this is for the number of skiers. Okay. Simplify the expression 15n plus 12n plus 100. Well, if we go back through and we highlight our like terms, then we have 15 and 12 is 27. I should write that in different colors. Oh, can you guys can see it? Sorry. N plus that 100 because it didn't go anywhere. Okay. You guys do number 14. You guys do number six. You totally can. You guys are going to go on to the back and you're going to do the lesson check because you're brilliant. And I'm going to zoom back out a little bit and we're going to go and do the file review. Okay? So it says a Mexican restaurant receives 60 takeout orders. The manager found that 60% of the orders were for tacos and 25% of the orders were for burritos. How many orders were for other items? Well, Let's start by, I'm gonna grab actually scrap paper here. Okay, and I'm gonna go 100% minus 60 plus 25 is 85. Okay. Zero can't take away five or eight. So I'm gonna go over here. I'm gonna make that a 10. Now I'm gonna make it a nine because I need to borrow one for that. So now 10 take away five is five, nine take away eight is one. So now 15, okay? So now 15% is what was for other orders, okay? But we need to find out how many that is. So 15% of 60 because that's how many takeout orders, okay? is so now i have to do 0.15 times i'm just going to do six because well i can do 60 but i'm going to take that and put it at the end okay so take the zero put it at the end six times five is 30 carry the three six times one is six plus three is nine i went in one two times there one two times here so nine is your answer nine orders there you go okay write your work down show your work okay all right the area of a rectangular field is 1710 square feet the length of the field is 45 feet what is the width of the field all right 
Let's do it. You ready? Okay. I'm just going to flip that around and make it easy. Okay. So area equals length times width. Okay. So now it's giving us the area is not in that color. 1,710 equals, and it is giving us the length is 45 feet, and it wants us to find the width, okay? Well, if you will remember, when we want to isolate this and get it alone, we have to do the opposite. Well, this is multiply, so the opposite is divide. Whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side. So now I'm going to come over here. I'm going to write in 1710, and I'm going to divide that by 45. Okay? I am also going to go over on the side here, and I'm going to write down multiples of 45 because I really only know those up to 90, which is only two. So, okay, so I'm going to write down forty five, ninety, one thirty five, one eighty, two twenty five. Okay, so that's five, and I hope I don't have to go any further, but we'll see, okay? So, now, so 45 is not going to go into one. It's not going to go into 17. It'll go into 171 three times for 135. Subtract. One cannot take away five. I'm going to make that a six and then an 11. So 11 take away five is six. Six take away three is three. Done. Okay. Now, I'm going to bring down my zero. I do not have the 360 yet, so I'm going to keep going. 270, 315, 315, and oh, 360. So that's going to be that one, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times, which is 360. Subtract zero. Okay, so 38 feet. Okay. Show your work. This is the only one that you have to, and this, okay? That, that's your work you need to write down, okay? You don't have to write down the multiples. That's kind of pointless, okay? All right. Now, how many terms are in 2 plus 4x plus 7y? Well, let's see. We have 1, 2, And this is a different letter, so it's three. Three terms. Boom. Okay. All right. All right. So, boxes of cereal usually cost $4, but they are on sale for $1 off. A gallon of milk costs $3. The expression 4B minus 1B plus 3 can be used to find the cost in dollars of buying B boxes, however many boxes of cereal, and a gallon of milk. Write the expression in simpler form. So we're going to combine our like terms. So I'm going to go for the 4B and the 1B. And 4B minus 1B is 3B. And I'm still adding that 3. Oops, I guess you didn't see that. Okay. All I did was go through, highlighted my like terms, combined them, and kept the other one. Okay. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out for 7.8. Come on back for 7.9. See you soon.